In this video, we're going to talk more about what coding is, dig into what we're going to build, and tell you why you should care. First, let's define some terms. There are a lot of words for working with computers, like computer science, software engineering, coding, programming. And for the purposes of this course, they're all completely equivalent. And really, there's only small semantic differences between each one. So what is coding and what does that mean? Coding is the process of creating software and software is the thing that runs a computer that tells the computer what to do. The words instructions to the computer sound incredibly broad and they are. That's because computers are everywhere and they need software to run. Let's look at some specific examples and then we'll drill down to the kind of computers and software that we're actually going to be working with. We need computers to control very large systems, such as a nuclear power plant or a manufacturing plant. We also need computers to create movies for us, create CGI. But we also need computers to control very small things, like an air conditioning remote or an access card that you use to get into your office or a wristwatch. Those are all examples of computer systems. And in order for any of those systems to work, they need software and that software needs to be coded by someone. In this course, we're going to cover the fundamentals that would apply to software for any of those systems. But the software that we're going to create in this course is specifically for your laptop, specifically inside of a browser. Of all the broad computer systems that we just saw, the software that we're going to be working with that you normally think of on a computer or a phone has four distinct properties. It takes user input, it's interactive, it represents and processes data, and it encodes behaviors and rules. Let's take the example of a banking app. On the screen of this app are numbers that represent things that happened in real life. The paycheck that represents all the hours you worked this month, the coffee you bought this morning, these actions are represented as numbers inside the app, the dollar amounts, and these numbers interact with each other. The typical numbers you would see inside a bank account app are the balance of the account, the list of transactions, the date of those transactions, the transaction amounts, a description, the interest rate of the entire account. These numbers, this data is being held inside the app and the app has certain behaviors and rules around this data, such as interest is added to the account every month, a fee is charged on the account if it's overdrawn, each transaction is recorded, and the balance is adjusted. That was an example of a banking app, but in this course, we're not going to build banking apps, we're going to build games. Let's look at the properties of a software game. It takes user input, it's interactive, it represents and processes data, and it encodes behaviors and rules. So these properties are the same as the banking app. I'm going to add one more property of a game, which is that it's a self-consistent system, which means that throughout the life cycle of using this software that we can construct all the rules and data inside that game without having to rely on any outside transactions, balances, actions by the user. And this makes it a perfect vehicle for understanding the concepts of software without having to worry about any real world systems. If we dig further into the concept of what a card game is, we can see that a deck of cards is actually just data. And when we play cards, we're applying rules to that data. So in a game of cards, what data do we have? We have the deck of cards, the players, the bets the players might make, and the individual hands of cards that are dealt to the players. And in a game of cards, we have rules. So in poker, those might be three of a kind beats a pair, and the players each take turns, and cards are dealt from the deck to the players. So to review in this course, our objective is to build this piece of software it has these properties of taking user input, representing processes and data, and encoding behaviors and rules. 
and we're going to go through the process of practicing coding through the syntax and structures of the JavaScript language. We're going to practice the translation of an English language specification to the actual code. We're going to practice computational thinking, the elements of how the computer executes instructions, and we're going to practice error fixing strategies about how to know where our code is going wrong and how to go about diagnosing those things.